M0FXB welcome back to the dog walks and today let's talk Yesu 817-818 and the new Yesu FX1 which looks like a super version of the FTM 500 and I do really like the look of it I think it's going to be a, a bestseller it's an SDR radio shack in the box probably 10 watts there is a module that you can connect to it that is an antenna tuner and a battery that slots on the back as well so I do like it but I do not think it is a replacement for the 818 817 and the reason is the 817 when it came out it was about I don't know today's money it was like 500 pound okay and you knew that you could buy that you got your leather case with it you had the antenna at the front and the back you had the internal battery and off you go you can do VHF UHF listen to airband and six meter I think you can transmit on six meters on that one and it was a real shack in the box but completely portable or you could put it on your desk at home connect it to your collinear on your roof and start having lots of VHF and UHF repeater contacts very unique although the screen was small you didn't mind because you just felt like you had this little shack in the box that would do everything you weren't too worried about how you treated it because once it went in that leather case it was small and compact um, you felt like it was going to be fine and it was and you know I don't know when what year it came out but let's just say it was out for 20 years roughly yeah um, and 20 years later you've still got that same radio and it works fine unless you've mistreated it everything's gonna work fine and even the 5 watts or tape was it, is it 5 watts or was it 10 with the DC supply I, you know I actually can't remember probably 10 with the supply and then there was lots of additional accessories very easy to get an antenna tuner an amplifier and you had on the back you had connections and if you bought a special a special sound card device you were on FTA and it had a real uniqueness to it a bit like the mini car you know they've rehashed the mini car so many times you know the UK mini car but there'll never be a mini car like the one that first came out the original model which was basically a small little car that was completely reliable great fun and when it came out not expensive so the FX one to me and I, I do and I am looking forward to having that radio but to me it's just a, it's a completely different radio it's like a brick with a beautiful color touch screen that's a shack in the box that's gonna have three the 3d or display which I don't ever use although I, I do have an FTDX 101 which I really like and I use it with the SCU LAN software on my PC it's a beautiful set but I never ever use the 3DS I just switch it across because I had a 7300 for years I've still got my 7610 which beautiful beautiful device you know lucky me and um, you can't beat that waterfall you know they talk about averaging and things like that but at the end of the day icon when they when they built the icon 7300 they just got it right and they the funny thing is they did it with the 705 as well you know when i saw the 705 being demonstrated for the first time and it had wi-fi and bluetooth that actually works yeah then that amazing display which was identical virtually if anything better than the 7300 and I tested it on HF and VHF and UHF and airband you know the ICOM 705 on airband is out of this world how good it is and you can see the all the signals there from the aeroplanes so that's another hard one to beat and I feel like this radio wasn't really brought out to and there goes Mazzy stop barking Mazzy leave it <laughs> anyway, I just walking the streets at the moment so anyway I feel like that the FX41, which is a, a radio that I predicted and actually made a spoof video which was nearly identical to the announced model, 
two, nearly two years ago I made that because it seemed obvious to me that that big VFO on the FTM 500 um, wasn't designed for a VHF UHF set, it was designed for a HF set. So I think they always knew and planned that the FX1 was going to come out eventually. So I feel, anyway, the FX1 to me is completely to compete with the 705. They could still replace the 817 with a very similar model. All right, maybe a slightly bigger screen is not going to hurt. But the internals don't have to hardly change. We don't have to have SDR every time a new radio is designed. We don't have to have that. I suppose it's nice to have it. Maybe manufacturing, it's easier. But sometimes we just like the traditional radio components. You know? So there's that. So this obviously this is all just my opinion. So it's a lovely day here. I'll show you this amazing view in a second. Look at that for a view. It's called the Bristol Channel. There's actually sea there and a bridge. If you go further around, I'm not sure if you can see it from here, but there's a bridge. There's two bridges going across. How beautiful is that? And it's not even a nice day today, but anyway. So back we go. So I thought I'd have this chat about the FX41, which in my opinion hasn't replaced the 818. And Yesu, they really have an opportunity here to bring a better version of the 818. Why not? You know, it's what it's what the uh, ham radio operatives want. It doesn't have to be a modern SDR touchscreen waterfall device. It doesn't have to be. Even Zygu, they, they're down that road so much that they they don't realise that some people just want a radio to look like a radio. Yeah. They don't need it to look like their television at home. Just my opinion. Bye for now. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Please remember to hit the like, subscribe, buy me a coffee. Me and my wife will go down Starbucks and have a, a cappuccino with all the trimmings. Bye for now.